Okay, in this video, we are going to graph the sine function. So um, the sine function can be represented by y equals a times the sine of k times x minus b plus c. That itself looks pretty complicated. Okay, um, the idea is there could be values here for a, k, b, and c. And essentially what those values are going to be doing is they're going to be moving your graph around. Okay, so it's just going to be like function transformations. Um, and the first one that I'm going to do on these notes is uh, um, just y equals sine x. So it's like the most basic sine function that I could graph. Um, I'm going to go to Desmos really quickly to explain what these things do. Um, I have that function typed out. Um, and, and I've got those values a, k, b, and c that are going to change this graph and, and what's going on. First thing I want you to know is that the sine function is a wave that just continues indefinitely in both directions. Which means the domain is all real numbers. So essentially what we're doing is we're plugging in angles into the sine function. We're doing the sine of those angles and we're getting y values returned from that. So some of these values should make sense. Uh, like the sine of 0 is 0, the sine of pi over 2 is 1, the sine of pi is 0, and so forth. And so what we're going to do when we graph the sine function, we are going to graph what is called one cycle or one period of the graph. And that's going to look like this exact thing that I have highlighted here. So hey, we're going to go uh, starting at 0, we're going to go up, and then back to 0, and then down, and then back to 0. And that is one snapshot of this wave that continues on indefinitely. So it's important that you know that it does continue on, but when we graph it, we're going to graph one section of that, and that's called one period of the sine graph. Okay, so what do these values do? Well, if I have an a value out front that is a, a multiplier, what that's doing is that's essentially stretching it out uh, vertically. So it's called the amplitude. Um, we're going to have what's called the midline, which in this case is the x-axis, and that should make sense. It's kind of cutting the graph in half. Um, if we look at that um, vertically, it's cutting it in half. So we're going to call that a midline. And the amplitude is just the distance from the midline to the top of the graph. So that distance is 1. Um, and so if a is something other than 1, that distance increases if the a is bigger than 1. Or if the a value is um, less than 1, but still positive, that's going to shrink that distance. And then if the a value is negative, we're actually going to just flip this graph over. Um, but the important note here is that if a is a negative value, we would still consider our amplitude to be the positive distance. So even though that, you know, if, if we've got a negative a value, we're going down first and then up, the amplitude is still that, that positive distance up to the top. Okay, so that's what the a value does. Um, and then we could have some other values changing here. So we could have... Um, a k value. So if we have a k value here, which is going to look, you're going to look for a value in between the trig function and the x, what that's essentially doing is that's going to affect the period of the graph. So with a k value of 1, the period of the graph is 2 pi. And what that means is you go from 0 to 2 pi and you've gone through one full cycle of the graph. Well, if that k value changes, um, notice if I'm making k a big value, um, what's happening is it's shrinking that down and it's taking less time or less distance for us to get through that one full cycle of sine. Whereas if k is some number less than 1 but positive, it's going to stretch that out and take more time to go through that one full cycle. Okay, so that's what the k value will do. And then b and c are simply just what we call shifts. b, we're going to call that a phase shift, and that's going to just take our graph and move it left and right. And then C is a vertical shift, which will just simply move it up and down. Okay, so we've got all of these aspects of this graph that could happen. Um, but we're going to go through those. Every time we graph one of these, we're going to go through and say, well, what is the amplitude? What is the period? What is the phase shift? And so on um, to help us graph this. Okay. Um, another aspect that I didn't really talk about was the range. The range of sine and of cosine is negative 1 to 1, which essentially means that your entire graph will occur between y values of negative 1 and 1. Okay, so it's going to keep on bouncing back and forth there, but it's all happening within that range of negative 1 to 1. Um, and that should make sense if you know the unit circle. 
as to why that is the case. So I'm going to jump into this first example, y equals sine of x. I'm going to first look at, well, what are these aspects? What's the am amplitude? Well, the amplitude is 1. There's, there's just a 1 out front there. The period. To find the period, you do 2 pi divided by k if there is a k value there. If there is no k value, it's an understood 1, so this is going to be a period of 2 pi. And then we're not adding or subtracting anything there, so I don't have a phase shift and I don't have a vertical shift for this one. To make your xy table, um, if there is no phase shift, you will start at 0, and the distance from your starting point to your last point needs to be the length of the period, which means your last point that we're going to plot is 2 pi. We always want to do 5 points, so the middle point is going to be pi, um, and then halfway between 0 and pi would be pi over 2, and halfway between pi and 2 pi would be 3 pi over 2. I'm going to go ahead and label those out to the side here. I'm choosing to spread this out a little bit, so I'm just labeling every other box. But we've got the x values that we're going to use to get that one cycle. Now, once you have that and you know the amplitude, the amplitude is 1, what we're going to do with sine is we're going to graph five points. And those five key points are your starting point, the top, back to the middle, to the bottom, and then back to the middle. And so if you know that pattern with sine, as long as you know the amplitude, we've got what these y values are going to be. We're going to start at 0. We're going to go up to 1 because the amplitude is 1. We're going to go back to 0. We're going to go down to negative 1. And then we're going to go back to 0. So this graph will simply look like that. Okay, And it's going to be one snapshot of the sine graph. Okay, so let's look at a couple with some transformations here. y equals 4 sine of 2x. The amplitude here is 4. The period is 2 pi divided by 2, which means the period is just pi. There's no phase shift and no vertical shift because we're not adding or subtracting anything. So if we make our xy table, um, no phase shift, we start at 0. The period is pi this time, which means our last x value is going to be pi. Halfway in between would be pi over 2, halfway here would be pi over 4, and halfway here would be 3 fourths, or 3 pi over 4. Again, I'm going to label those out, 0, pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, and pi. Okay, so this time our amplitude is 4, so how does that change things? Well. Again, we're just going to follow our pattern for sine. We start at 0, we go up to the amplitude, back to 0, down to negative the amplitude, back to 0. So our graph will look like this. We'll start at 0, 0, we'll go up to 4 at pi over 4, back to 0, down to negative 4 at 3 pi over 4, and then back to 0. And we end up with a graph like that. Now, they're always going to kind of look the same after you graph them, and that's primarily because you can label the uh, x and y axis however you want to. Um, but if you were to graph these on the same uh, coordinate plane, you would see that they are quite different. Um, this one is obviously stretched out a lot more. It's a lot taller. But it also, the period here is just pi, and the period here was 2 pi. So this entire graph, this, with this uh, one cycle here, would happen just from 0 to pi on this one. So it would be really stretched out and, and really scrunched together um, horizontally. Okay, So do, do know that. Even though they may look the same, they are quite different when you graph them. Okay, last one here. y equals sine of 1 fourth x plus 2. Here the amplitude is 1. The period is 2 pi divided by 1 fourth, which means 2 pi times 4, so 8 pi. The plus 2 is a vertical shift, not a phase shift, because it, to be a phase shift, it needs to be inside with the x. Okay, It needs to happen in parentheses here if it's a phase shift. If not, it's a vertical shift. So um, that plus 2 is a vertical shift, and there is no phase shift. Um, and so we're going to see how this is going to affect our graph here. Um, no phase shift. Again, start at 0. End of the period is 8 pi, so we're going to go from 0 to 8 pi, and then we're going to fill in our halfway points, which would be 4 pi, 2 pi, and 6 pi. Um, you can go ahead and label those out, 0, 
2 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi, and 8 pi. And then um, here's how a vertical shift is going to affect everything. So a vertical shift, we're going vertically up 2 because it's plus 2. If it were minus 2, we'd be going down 2. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a horizontal line at that value. So I'm going to draw a horizontal line at positive 2. What that has done is that has shifted our entire graph. It has shifted our midline up 2. So this graph is no longer centered on the x-axis like these first two were. Our midline is now up 2. So what, that, what we're going to see from that is I'm still going to follow this pattern. So if my amplitude is 1, I'm still going to only go up 1 and down 1, but from the midline. So at 0, we're going to be on the midline. Okay, so the y coordinate at 0 is actually 2, because we're shifting that up 2. And then at 2 pi, we're going to go up 1, which means this is going to be 3. We're going to go back to the midline at 6 pi, which means this is back to 2. We're going to go down 1, which means we're going to be at 1 at 6 pi. And then we're going to be back to the midline at 8 pi, which means we're going to be back to 2. And our graph would look like that. Okay, and again, we're going up 1 and down 1 because the amplitude was 1. If the amplitude was 5, I would go up 5 from 2 at 2 pi and down 5 from 2 at 6 pi. So we're just doing the amplitude from that midline, um, and that's how you uh, account for that vertical shift.